As part of CES 2022, Acer unveiled a handful of Chromebooks, but none more important than this one that is sitting in front of us right now. It's one of a handful of these that are floating around. This device won't be out until June, but it is the new Acer Chromebook Spin 513. And more importantly, it has inside of it the new MediaTek Companio 1380 flagship level ARM chip that we are super excited to see in an actual Chromebook. We're jumping in to take a quick look at it. Let's get into it. So at first glance, you may be looking at this and thinking that looks familiar. And we brought in the existing 713 for reference and yeah, you're not crazy. It, it It's quite familiar. It actually in the chassis feels almost identical to the 713. And that might be a little bit confusing. It was for us at first until we talked to Acer about it. But the, the Acer models basically go 300, 500, 700, and they would depict what you expect. Uh, 300 is a lower end, more affordable device. 500 level devices kind of fit themselves in the middle. 700 devices are at the top. And usually the last two digits indicate the screen size. So the 713 is a 13.5 inch uh, device that is, you know, kind of their nicer version of a Chromebook. And we know all about the 713. We've loved the 713, the 713 that came before it, and the one that came before that. It's been a great Chromebook uh, throughout the years, and each update it just gets a little bit better. And so it's like, okay, how does this one work exactly? Why is this a 513? It must be missing some components, right? It must, it must not have all the bells and whistles that the 713 has, but actually that's not really the case we'll get back to the outside bits here in just a second but again the chassis is it feels like almost the exact same size i mean we didn't get like a micrometer out and measure everything but it feels like it's the same width height depth all that kind of stuff uh, they feel very similar in their weight so basically what i'm saying is if you've handled a 713 the feel, the look, all that kind of stuff of this is going to be similar but what you'll note right off the bat is the lack of fan ports here and the lack of fan ports down here because it doesn't need them. It's an arm chip. So there's no need for ventilation and all that kind of stuff. They can just kind of use passive cooling. Uh, same speaker ports down here at the bottom. Uh, and then you notice this different color. So it's, you know, the, the standard kind of Acer gray is always good looking. Uh, they've had one on a Spin 514 that had a greenish tint to it. I liked it a lot, but I really, really like this colorway. It's a much more charcoal look. It's a little bit more sandblasted, a tad bit more textury than what they've had before. Not a ton, uh, it's not wildly different, but it does seem to resist fingerprints pretty well, but the 713 did that too. You get the nice chamfered edge around the side, as you can see there. So we're dealing with an all aluminum chassis here too. So again, no corners cut there. So exactly where do we get into a 500 range uh, on this device? Well, it certainly isn't the display because now we're dealing with, again, a 13.5 inch uh, three by two aspect ratio, high res display. I never can remember the resolution. I think 2256 by 1504, I think. Don't quote me on that. If it's wrong, we'll pop up something on the screen that would correct uh, the misnomer here. But it's an oddball resolution, but it's close to four or close to Quad HD. I'm sorry, uh, and and keeps that three by two aspect ratio. Uh, you've heard us talk about this uh, screen size specifically with the HP Dragonfly, the Elite Dragonfly that just came out, the C1030 before it, and all the 713s that have come before this device. And it's awesome. It's a great screen size for I don't know what anything you really want to do on a Chromebook because the height of this is going to be close to a 15.6 inch 16 by nine screen. Just imagine cutting the sides off. So you get all the height that you would want out of a larger Chromebook, but then when it's closed down, it just feels much more small, portable, and easy to manage. It by far and away is my favorite screen size aspect ratio resolution combination. It's just a fantastic panel. Now again, as we open this thing up and get to the keyboard, this particular one we have is pre-production. Um, so it doesn't have the backlit keyboards, but it will have backlighting in the keyboard from what we understand from the spec sheets. You still get this nice large glass trackpad that feels just as nice and clicky as the one on the 713. You get the same chassis again that you had on that device. And I would say the keyboard here actually feels a little bit better. So you can kind of listen here as I type. It's just a little less clacky than the one you get on the 713. And I don't know what the deal's always been with this 
You can kind of just hear that. It's, it's I don't know, just clacky is a weird word to say, but that's just what it's always felt like to me. This feels a little more tight, refined, and quiet. Um, so I like the keyboard here again as uh, we're assuming backlighting gets added here uh, Let me log in real quick just so you can kind of get an eye on this screen here uh, That's a that's a nice background um, And so not surprising. I mean, it's colorful punchy, you know, really great contrast ratios I can see the screen just fine from this crazy off angle. I mean, it's a great great screen um, You're also getting eight gigs of RAM 128 gigs of EMMC storage. It's not uh, it's not NVMe storage. Uh, your standard 720p webcam up here, so nothing nothing amazing there. There's no fingerprint scanner either, but you're getting the Companio 1380, which I can't run any benchmarks and show you. What I can tell you is it's quick. Uh, I've already done quite a bit of normal tasks on it, and it feels very very quick. There's nothing about this that feels like you're running on ARM chips uh, that we've had on Chromebooks before, where you can just kind of tell there's a performance hit. There's none of that going on here. So all of a sudden you start adding up all the pieces here and we have a fantastic screen, a workable uh, uh, webcam, a really nice keyboard, a great trackpad, good enough internals, eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. And then this nice, quick MediaTek Companio 1380 processor that you'll never hear a fan kick on from and should get around 10 hours of use and battery life. And all of a sudden, I'm not really sure why this is in the 500 category necessarily because it makes you feel like uh, this is a device that should be a step under the 713 and honestly that just does not feel like at least at this point to be the case at all. So it's easy to kind of come to the conclusion already with this pre-production model this thing's not due out till June uh, somewhere around that time frame hopefully it comes out a little bit earlier but it's hard to put this a full step beneath something like the 713 when it feels so similar to use it and it's not like we're falling off this big uh, performance gap when we leave Intel behind and go to a MediaTek processor but in talking to Acer, that's kind of the idea behind saying that this is a 500 series. Because if you remember last year, we had a Spin 513 and it had the Snapdragon 7C, a 13.3 inch 16 by nine screen, some plastic in the chassis. And it was, it was a fine Chromebook. It wasn't, it wasn't bad, uh, but it clearly felt like a 500 level type Chromebook. This one just doesn't. And I'm not saying that to like bash Acer's naming or anything. They can name the Chromebooks whatever they want to. I just want to make it very clear at this point that as you're looking forward maybe in the summer to getting a Chromebook and thinking about the things that are coming out, don't sleep on this device. Uh, just because it says 513, it doesn't mean that it's some huge step down from the 713 if you've liked it or if you wanted a 713. It, this thing is built almost the exact same, same mil spec kind of stuff going on here too. This one, the, the, the 713 does have a full size HDMI port, uh, yeah, on the side that you lose on here but they put the USB type C's on either side. And so uh, that's a nice touch. And the, the ports are simple, you know, USB-C on one side, uh, another USB-C and a USB type A headphone, microphone, micro SD card. So pretty straightforward on that kind of stuff. You do get Wi-Fi six as well in here. So you're not taking a step back in connectivity, Bluetooth five. So I mean like all the stuff is here to make this a great Chromebook. And I can tell you from uh, the limited time I've used it, it, it has been great. It's really been great. And it's not like I've got to introduce you to um, a bunch of new wild things that this Chromebook can do. This is just going to be a solid Chromebook. And the best part is it starts at $599 is what Acer's told us. We expected that to be the lower end spec. Uh, not the case. This is the one that we have here, 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, MediaTek Companio 1380. Uh, that's going to be $599. And just like this device over here and every other Acer Chromebook that's ever existed, don't expect it to go for MSRP for too long. It'll probably go on sale. So the, the minute you can start getting this for $450, $500, I mean, that's just an insane value. Again, we can't say a lot about the Companio. All I can tell you right now is that it is very snappy. Uh, I did hook it to my, my extended uh, Quad HD monitor and it works. So that'd be the first ARM Chromebook to be able to actually push that monitor properly. Uh, so a lot of upside here. And so this gets me excited about where MediaTek Chromebooks are going in 2022, because all of a sudden, if we start seeing some tablets and detachables with this processor inside, 
this is a no compromise kind of situation. You don't need fans. You're getting really, really good performance out of the thing. And I can extend desktops and all that kind of stuff the way I would expect to. And maybe not have to have an Intel processor in the next Chromebook that I would purchase for myself. But that's it for this one, guys. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Head down there and hit that subscribe button. And be sure and ring the notification icon as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Till next time, we'll see you.